Hi, um, it is Wednesday, uh, uh, le the Wednesday leading up to Christmas, uh, the sixth day of Hanukkah, uh, and if it's Wednesday at noon, it's Writing Wednesday, and I'm Janet Fitch, um, and uh, here to answer your questions and uh, talk a little bit about the writing life, little craft questions, anything that interests you. Um, I do have question, uh, a really nice letter that somebody sent me. Hey, Jeffrey. A really nice letter somebody sent me this week um, that has really good questions. So I asked her if I could uh, do it for Writing Wednesday, and she said yes, so that's the best. Hi, Alicia. Um, so I wanted to talk about that. Um, first, uh, I wanted to say for the... Hi, Shona. Um, I wanted to say that um, we're still in the early bird signups for uh, The Art of the Sentence, uh, which will be a weekend intensive in January on the sentence. So January 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, the early bird. Hey, Jill. Hey, Shona. Hi, Phyllis. Uh, the early bird... Um, uh, discount will go, I believe, until the 25th of December. So maybe till the end of December, but at least until the 25th. So if you want to sign up and get the discount for Art of the Sentence, that will be um, uh, at uh, communityofwriters.org. Um, and uh, meantime, um, if anybody out there is interested in comedy writing, uh, hey, Janet. Uh, oh, how wonderful. Janet's already signed up. Correct. Wonderful. So if anybody out there is interested in comedy writing, which is obviously not my specialty, uh, but my husband is a pretty well-known comedy writer. And uh, he had been, he and his writing partners were, writing partner were Johnny Carson's head writers. And he's done just about everything, you know, jokes, you know, writing for uh, comedians. You know, these are comedy writers. And he taught at UC Davis um, a couple of times um, and has lectured on, on comedy writing. And uh, I said, hey, you know, why don't you write a book? Because uh, a lot of people can't, you know, take a class at, at a UC. You know, you have to be an enrolled student. Um, and so he has written a book and I've gotten the sample cover uh, a little bit wrinkled. Um, Comedy Writer by Andrew Nichols. And uh, it is available at uh, the big mm, Amazon. I uh, hate to say it, but yes. Uh, so anyway, craft advice from a veteran of sitcom, sketch, animation, late night, print, and stage. He has just done everything. He has written for cartoonists. He has written for, you know, people, industrials, you know, I mean, he's done it all, uh, late night stand up. Uh, hey, Sayward. So if anybody is interested in comedy, this book just came out and, uh, he's doesn't even have his website up yet, <laughs> but the book is out and, uh, Hey Ruthie. So anybody who's interested in comedy, uh, would benefit from that's like 40 something years of experience um, in all genres and a lot of TV work and a lot of writing for comedians and and for those of you who are doing comedy and want to write your own material and have it be really good you'll get some interesting ideas uh, so I recommend his work because he uh, He's a very, he's a comedy writer, a very quiet guy, but the guy who in high school would get you in trouble because he would pass a note that was hilarious, and then you would laugh and you would get in trouble. <laughs> uh, writing comedy this morning, which I'm confusing with sex writing youth, he said, that's not good. <laughs> So I have a question from uh, Poppy. I don't know if you're able to tune in today, um, but she wrote me a uh, note that I thought was uh, questions that are about the writing life and the necessity of making a living and that real, 
that real stuff that, you know, we do have to deal with. Um, so this is, uh, Poppy was offered a place to do a cert for in writing, which is making up a, uh, I dropped, I'm writing and editing. I dropped out of high school, um, 25 years old. Um, so a cert for is like a associate degree. I think it's making up, then you get your high school diploma and you get a specialized degree as opposed to a BA, you know, four years. And it's not specialized, right? It's a general, uh, BA is a general degree. And her, her dream is to write one day. I'm sure she's writing all right, right now. Uh, whether poetry or fiction, not sure. Why not both? Uh, the last couple of years, basically tried to read as much as I can and become familiar with other writers' work. Well, perfect. Uh, no knowledge when it comes to practical things like structure and even my grammar is foggy. Uh, you have an innate sense of grammar if you read that much. It, it, it does bury in. You don't have to know what things are called to know whether something is grammatical. Like, I, I couldn't tell you a participle from a, you know, a pineapple, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> but if you've read enough, you, you have an innate sense of how to put a sentence together. Not the greatest sentence, necessarily. That's why we're going to, that's why I'm teaching the art of the sentence. But, you know, you'll have, you won't be making a lot of mistakes. Um, I need a source of income in the meantime. That's right. Um, I, I thought it could be beneficial to try and further my education and potentially do something in the writing field to get that certification. However, I'm just curious as to your opinion on someone doing something like copyright or editing, copywriting or editing. Do you think any practical skills would be gained that could be applied to creative writing? Or do you think it would make creative writing more difficult? This is to do that degree program in writing and editing. A creative writing course would be ideal, but I worry that wouldn't be actual jobs available from that. I've always been curious as to what you did after studying history, how you were able to survive, what you did for work. If you did other forms of study, uh, I read you also taught creative writing. How were you able to progress on your own without having your work read, receiving feedback from qualified people on how to improve? How did you learn about publishing and where to send things to, etc.? Okay, so there are several wonderful questions here. Wonderful, so you can see why I want to save it for Writing Wednesday. Okay, the first question is, should I take this course in... Um, writing and editing as opposed to a creative writing course um, and finish my uh, high school degree and get some uh, extra focus. So there are two aspects to that question. You know, should I do this course as opposed to not do the course or should I do this course as opposed to maybe going for a BA? Now, uh, finishing the high school diploma is always a good thing. It's good to have that in the bag, you know, um, having it, you will never go wrong learning how to edit ever, you know, um, a BA is more general and I believe in a general degree. I think that the, with writing, the less that the more, you know, the better so that having, getting a BA in creative writing is sort of like, I, you know, people do it, but I think it's too early to specialize. I think you're better off learning something about reality, you know, learning something about anthropology, psychology, history, you know, physics, you know, all those non-required classes. I mean, those required classes that are general ed. Uh, if you can afford it, if you can figure out how to afford it, if you can do it after the certification program, I'm a big um, believer in being a generalist. 
And if you can't do it in a university setting, which is nice because they force you to do things you wouldn't do otherwise, and then later on it all goes into the pot. But if you're willing to do it yourself and pursue things and you, you can't do the degree program, I understand, you know. Um, I'm not hot in majoring in creative writing undergrad. Okay, that's really personal and... If you're asking my opinion, that's my opinion, and it's a grain of salt opinion. This is just somebody's rando opinion, uh, as good as anybody else's. But I like to see, I'd rather see somebody who is interested in creative writing, you know, have to take those required, you know, like other courses and learn other things. Um, otherwise, you get into grad school if you ever do an MFA or an advanced degree, I've certainly taught those classes and what they write very well but they don't have sometimes they don't have much to say they don't have the varied enough interests and exposure to interesting th take philosophy you know take history take political science take you know math take you know, a little bit of, take foreign languages, you know, uh, a little bit of everything is kind of the fodder of writing. And rather than just raking, what people do is they start working with what they have been exposed to, which, you know, undergraduate, what's that going to be? You know, movies, TV. So then you're digesting what's already been digested. I'd rather see a straight English major than a than creative writing. Um, and this is not what I would have said at the time. <laughs> I would have loved taking a creative writing major. <laughs> but over, you know, I think that the discipline uh, and being exposed to other things, uh, being a fiction writer is being a great generalist. Um, I just read this wonderful book about, um, oh, where is it? This wonderful book about the writer um, Octavia Butler uh, called A Hand, where is it? Oh, I didn't pull it. Okay. It's called A Handful of Earth, A Handful of Sky. Um, and it's about, um, it, it's a writer who based the book on working with Octavia Butler's archive. So it wasn't about Octavia Butler's work. It was about her creation of herself as a writer. And I really recommend this. A great gift book. Uh, it's, you know, a young writer would uh, find this really accessible. You know, it's not super technical. And it's, uh, so it's really written for a general audience. And it shows how she created herself as an artist, uh, as a person, as a writer, you know, because there's no difference between the writer and the person, right? And there is some of it, you know, uh, but the ego and stuff is like personal. And it shows her struggling with herself and how she talked herself off the ledge a billion times and dealt with the money issue. She was always scrounging for temp work and doing secretarial and doing all kinds of stuff and just pinching every penny counted. Uh, it's quite an eye opener. And I think anybody who hasn't delved into that, the writer's life, you know, should read that book. It's so good. Um, but the point was she read everything. She went through her, her library was her university, right? The library, public library was her university. And she read science, she read anthropology, she read politics, she read history, she read, you know, black, the black authors, she read the classic sci-fi, she read, you know, comic books, she read everything, and it just, it made the mix so that when she finally came up with this genre of her own, you know, uh, sci-fi, black futurism um it pulled from everything she had been reading all those years so read wildly read widely get off the internet and start reading deeply um because the internet is always just a taste of things
books, you know. You should read the book, not, a, you know, a, a blog entry. Um, so college, you know, conventional college is, I really recommend it, even though it is, you know, you have to deal with the financials. You know, should I do this degree or should I not do any degree? I think education is always good. Should I do this or do creative writing? I'm on the side of doing practical, you know, of this, this degree course sounds really like a very good, it covers a lot of bases for you, Poppy. Um, editing is always good, but editing nonfiction, like the kind of jobs you get editing is business writing, stuff like that, which is all about clarity, clarity, clarity. And there's, you know, clarity is like absolutely necessary. But in creative writing, you're also going to explore style, which you just, there's no room for. So I don't think it will hurt you to take the editing course, but just know that there's going to be a difference between your creative writing and then what you do uh, as an editor for, you know, a big publication about cranes or, you know, farm equipment. Um, and uh, so I do think that practical skills gain could be applied to creative writing. Yeah, clarity, clarity is always really good. Um, but do I think it could make creative writing more difficult? Um, not if you have that sense of the difference, you know, that there's a difference between cooking large amounts of food for an institutional setting, like working in a high school cafeteria, and then cooking a beautiful meal at home for your loved ones, uh, you know, or a fancy, you know, three course, seven course dinner. You know, if you're aware of the difference, there is, things are not directly translatable, but having been, being able to cook beautifully at home might improve that institutional food you're making for the high school. Being able to do the high school and just get it out there, get it out there, get it out there, you just savor the art form that you're creating privately for your family. Um, you don't have to make, you know, 700 servings of that, you know? You can just get the perfect little piece of meat or something. So I don't, you know, I think they're related, but they're not, they're not the same. But no, I don't think that it would make creative writing more difficult. It, what, what's difficult, and God, read this Octavia Butler book. Oh, let's see. Now, where is it? Oh, it's on the shelf here. <laughs> of course. Oh, shoot. I don't see it. Anyway, there's a picture of Octavia Butler on the front. Uh, it's called A Handful of Earth, A Handful of Sky. And you really see the struggle of every dime making that money. It makes the, you know, it's the difference between surviving as a writer and having and not surviving. You know, she could very well have gone under. Um so I never look down on making money. You know, it's uh, people who say, oh, don't worry about that. You know, just take out $100,000 worth of loans. It's like, no, <laughs> I don't take out $100,000 of loans. <laughs> no. If you can avoid it, do avoid it. <laughs> um, I think that it's it's elite, you know, I hate to use terms like elitist, but it is sort of elitist to not recognize the struggle 
and that money is going to be extremely important in your life. It is important, you know? Um, and so being able to make some money as a copywriter, she asked about copywriting. I need a source of income. Um, in the meantime, I thought it would be beneficial to try and further my education. Yeah, that's right. And potentially do something in the writing field. You know what? You don't have to do something in the writing field. I'm a great believer in, you know, if you can get some copywriting job where you're um, describing t-shirts or describing scented candles or something and it's not too onerous, yeah, go for it. But um, there's also something to be said for just having a job job that you don't care about. And then you do your your art form that you care very much about. And um, I'm a great, you know, I'm a great believer in working the, for your job, for a job, job, ideal job, job for a writer is a part, the best paying part-time job you can find. Uh, but life is expensive right now and that doesn't look like it's going to let up. Um, so the best paying job that doesn't take up a lot of your emotions, you know, if it pays okay, you know, f factory work used to be great. It paid well. And you, you know, a lot of the beats worked in the Boeing plant in, uh, in uh, Venice Beach. A uh, lot of waiting tables, a lot of bartending. Uh, I was a, this is what uh, Poppy asks, uh, what I've always been curious as to what you did after studying history, how you were able to survive what you did for work. Um, when I graduated from college uh, with a BA in history, I became a proofreader because it's the only thing I could do was spell and read really fast. And then I got into graphic, the graphic arts. So I became a paste up artist and a typesetter and typesetter is a, in the graphic arts, you're, you would, uh, set, set type. You would, uh, when you see a menu, when you see anything printed, somebody used to type that in that was a special job you know writers just worked on a typewriter and then somebody would type that up in a way that was every letter was uh was photographed and printed on long strips of photographic paper called galleys and you'd strip them out you'd cut them to size and columns or pa pages and then that would be pasted down by another person and I love type I'm a writer uh, so to me I, I loved that job because it was somewhat arty it was not emotionally involving the you know I didn't deal with the public very well at that time I was kind of intense <laughs> person I could deal with the public <laughs> and uh, it paid well and it was part-time and uh, I worked did that for many many years but I've been a manpower temp did a lot of secretarial terrible fo on phones I jangled easily so if things didn't go right I was freaked out uh, typing people's letters you know sometimes correcting the grammar, cleaning it up. I've done uh, uh, business writing where I would write, uh, like rewrite engineering reports in a way that, say, a council member, uh, city council member could understand it because engineers write all in jargon. Uh, so calling engineers and going like, well, what, what does that mean? Business writing, you know, copywriting, I would do that. Um, Grant writing is a really good skill. If you get that, that's a super, um, that's a super good skill to have. So the writing skills are, are wonderful to have, and I don't think this course would hurt you at all. Um, and then it'll give you your high school diploma so that if you decide to take a BA somewhere, you'll be partway there, I assume. Um, 
What did I do for work? Other things I did for work. I waited tables for a very short time. It was really bad. Really, I jangled easily. I mean, before I was a mom, I did not do more than one thing at a time well. Uh, now I, I think I could do it. But uh, back then, I was just too too intense, too focused, one thing after another. Um, practical skills are always good. Uh Creative writing course would be ideal, but not many actual jobs. That's right. That's true. Um, if you had any other form of study after I started working, um, any other forms of study, I was a, I did film school for a, a semester and dropped out. Uh, it was far too collaborative. You know, I'm, I am too intense to work with other people. Uh, I like people socially, but uh, I can't. I couldn't work in a collaborative medium. I, I'm too egotistical. You know, it has to be my way. Uh, if if I'm producing an art work of art, if I'm directing a film, I'm not as open to, or I wasn't at that point uh, that open to other people's ideas. I think now at this late date. I've started to realize, oh, people have great ideas and this could be really fun. I'm a lot lighter than I was back then. I was pretty dark. Um, uh, how are you able to progress on your own without having work read or receiving feedback from qualified people on how to approve? Yeah, that was the big problem. I was, I was a, uh, I was a uh, typesetter in, uh, living in Portland, working down the Columbia River Gorge, and uh, or working in type houses. I worked all kinds of type jobs. But getting good feedback took frickin' forever. Um, I finally, I mean, I read everything, but without guidance, it, was, it wasn't good. And I took some really bad writing classes, and that wasn't good. Film school didn't help, I, you know. Um, and finally, I found a writer who I really admired who was teaching and um, begged to get into that workshop and tried out and uh, was accepted. And uh, that's where I learned most of what I know about writing. The rest was just trial and error and wasted a tremendous amount of time. So... Uh, advice, you know, is to take classes with writers that you admire wherever you live. And the neat thing about the interwebs is that you can take classes for, at a distance now. So even if you're in a small town uh, and don't know any writers and aren't near an extension program that's any good, um, you can still find great teachers and go ahead and take workshop Um so that was really very important to me, uh, being a, a participant at the community of writers uh, in their summer workshop was really helpful to me. Some people do the, there's one at Skidmore that is a really famous one. Um, uh, the summer workshops are good. And then you can find people whose criticism seems really good and keep, keep, uh, in touch with them. I'm doing that in, um, I'm doing that in, uh, uh, with this art of the sentence class. And I did it with the last one with the writing from the census class through the community of writers is they're really big on community. So they put everybody in breakout rooms, um, so that you could meet other people and start, uh, finding other people who you might want to work with after the class was over. And uh, Brett at Community of Writers has been talking about more about how we can get more people in touch with other writers who they could work with. Um, but beginner writers need a leader. You know, other, you know, you put a bunch of beginning writers together for a workshop and they're like, well, I liked it and I kind of liked it too, you know. Uh, they don't do that with medical students. You know, they don't put a bunch of first year medical students and say, okay, you know, how would you, you know, how would you, you know, cure this guy's cancer? 
it's like, well, uh, they generally are led by somebody who helps them along, you know, to figure out what is what. So we're doing some thinking about that uh, at Community of Writers. Um, how do you learn about publishing? How did you learn about publishing and where to send things to? Oh, okay. This is where there is a book by, put out by Poets and Writers, another writer or, organization called The Complete Guide to Being a Writer. And it has everything in it. And I can see it. And I'm going to grab it right now. So, Poppy, this is the book that you need. Poets and Writers, Complete Guide to Being a Writer. Everything you need to know about craft, inspiration, agents, editors, publishing, and the business of building a sustainable writing career. This is a treasure. They just came out with it this year. And everyone should have that. It, it speaks to inspiration. It to, speaks to craft. It speak, People are interviewed. So there's some wonderful writers telling like what books affected them or uh what was their agent what query letter did they send out that got them their agent i mean you actually see the correspondence back and forth so that is a super uh a good way to learn about publishing um and agents and stuff it uh you know, having done it, you know, kind of off the grid or, um, you know, not through a program. Programs are great and a good program is funded. They pay you, you don't pay them. Um, so it's, I, I don't want to see anybody with $100,000 of debt in a creative writing program. You know, that's not, that's going to be a burden all your life. Uh, <laughs> So let's see, I'm going to look at some of your questions now and see what I've missed. Okay, Ruthie uh, says she saw an interview with Linnell George last night. Yeah, Linnell, that Octavia Butler book is brand new. So the author, Linnell George, is out there right now um, uh, talking, about, talking about it. So you can find her interviews like all over the internet. That. And that is a book way worth having. Oh, what a heartbreaker. Um, and Ray Bradbury talking about living at his local library. If you cannot afford a college degree, and you should really think about how you can afford a college degree, you know, uh, start with a with junior college, which is free. And then figure it out, you know, figure out how to do it because it may, it exposes you to stuff that you it's harder to do. An autodidact, a person, self-taught person, usually has big holes in the education that they miss later on. But it's not necessary. It's that intense reading in many fields and just wandering in a library so that you can just browse randomly on a shelf and things pop up anthropology oh my god i don't know a thing about the whatever tribe of of you know central american um uh, indigenous people well that looks really interesting you expose yourself rather than just reading a bunch of contemporary easy to digest novels is not going to it's not going to give you a basis that's going to last you your whole life. Um, so, yeah, so Bradbury, a tremendously um, curious person. Curiosity. Nothing. Without curiosity, you're not going to be a writer. Curiosity is like the first step. Um, then Marla says, uh, offering my opinion on an entry-level writer choosing five protagonists to revolve their first time novel around. One of them is going to be your protagonist because you can't end a book. It, it will be very difficult to end a book if you have five protagonists. So you have five main characters and one of them is the true protagonist. Um, 
it's a lot of work. You're going to be, a, it's going to be a bigger book and more to wrestle. But if you have your skills down, uh, I don't think there's such a thing. Entry level writer, first time writer might be easier to do a single protagonist and follow somebody's story. But if this is more interesting to you, um, just make sure you know who your real, your, your, um, your actual protagonist is, who's going to have the change and give you an ending. So, um, Let's say Zunaid says, let's see if I can get the whole question. It's a long one. Um, is reading a story now, um, novel by a notable American author, love story, and moments in which they touch or embrace by breaking away from the scene. Yeah, that's the old fashioned way to do it is, you know, you don't stick around for the sex. You know, the, the curtain closes, you know, they kiss and then, I don't know, I'm a, you know, I'm over 21. I kind of want to see the, you know, something a little bit more exciting than the curtains closing. <laughs> I'm a grown up. I want to see the grown up stuff. Um, and then they take whole chapters to follow memories and take too long to res return to the present tense. So you are, you are seeing, you're starting to see what they're doing and develop opinions about how you feel about that kind of writing, which is what writers do. So you're reading this book like a writer, and that is really good. We're forced to f flip from memory to memory, but the present hangs in my mind as this craft, authorial identity, stream of consciousness. I don't know. That this is a choice that this writer, uh, a storytelling style that this writer has chosen, and then you'll have your opinions about it. I don't, I don't know what you would call the structure of the book. It's the way they've decided to tell the story. Um, during your time as a student, where did you do your internship? Jeffrey asked. I'd never did an internship. You know. How does a writer do an internship? Actually, I've had a couple of interns um, who've helped me publicize a book when it's come out. That's that's how you use, that's how a writer might take an intern to do the stuff that is not writing. But writers don't need interns. Maybe research, writers need researchers. Uh, if you have people who are writing Somebody I was talking to used uh, researchers, historical. Uh, who was it? Was it Elmore Leonard? Somebody like that used researchers or Connolly. Somebody, mystery writer, using heavy research. Heavy research. They needed somebody else or they just never finish. Um, and that's maybe something you can offer if you're looking to, for an internship with a writer. But usually writers don't need, uh, fiction writers usually don't use interns. Uh, editors use interns, you know, publishers use interns uh, and they go through them. And that's an interesting thing to do to see what it looks like on the other end. Um, but no, I never did an internship. Um, you know, if, if I was working for a, a writer that I, admired, you know, what would they use me for? Get the dry cleaner, you know? Uh, you do an intern, he does the thing that you don't want to do. And writers sort of are self-contained, except for when they have a book out. So if you're looking to do an internship with a writer that you admire, uh, you know, keep your ear to the ground and say, gee, you know, if you need some help, once I, when I have a new book out, when you have a new book out, you know, I would love to work with you. So, um, Alicia was talking about to get a book, Writer's Book of Days. Now, that's not my book. That's a book by Judy Reeves, who runs uh, writing workshops in San Diego and gave me my first job 
working at a center called uh, San Diego Writers, Inc. Um, so it doesn't say if they have it, do you know? No, I have no idea. Um, but you can, you can call them. You can have them order it. Um, it by Stephen King. Uh, down to the last hundred pages, but good example of multiple tr protagonists. There's usually going to be a protagonist. You know, the person who it closes out on. You know, you'll, you'll see who it is. Um, Border of Paradise, multiple narrators. Well, the big, you know, the classic is Barbara King Solver's um, uh, um, Poisonwood Bible, which has six voices and every voice distinct ends with the mother. Um, and that is a tour de force. I, I don't see that as somebody's first novel. I mean, that is so, so sophisticated. And the, the power to create intimately that many characters in their own voices, narrating a story from six points of view. It's the same story, but from everybody's point of view, an unbelievable good book. Um, so... Uh, Poppy, if you're watching, I hope that uh, I've answered your some of your questions. Um, writing jobs, whether if somebody is looking for a writer and you have a certification in writing and editing, you have a better chance of getting that job. If you're, say, a, a, a company is looking for somebody to do part-time writing and editing uh, for their uh, industrial publications, uh, that's going to be a good qualifier. But if you are looking for, um, you know, just a job in a company, yeah, it'll do better than creative writing. Creative writing is, I like it, I prefer it in graduate school than undergraduate just because it seems to specialize too early and leave out your development as an artist and your development as an intellectual. Um, on the other hand, being an, in, uh, an academic, an intellectual, an academic especially, does hurt your writing a bit, creative writing a bit, because you develop this passive, you know, not necessarily a passive voice, but this kind of stilted language that they use sometimes in academia, very specific terms for intellectual artifacts. You know, they have very specific terms for things that should never flop over into fiction, except to be parodied. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> and the academic life is where a lot of writers end up. And it used to be if you were an author like me, you know, if you were just a wild card author out of the blue like me, you know, you could work at a university um, and teach creative writing. But now they all want those degrees. They want to see a terminal degree. So they want to see an MFA or PhD in creative writing. I don't know. I'd rather work with somebody who's has gone through it and uh, has experienced other kinds of experience. The negation of the negation. <laughs> uh, that is from uh, Bob McKee, who was my creative, who was my screenwriting teacher at, in film school, and we quit at the we quit at the same time, and he started doing these. Uh, these classes out of um, uh, out of school, out of a rec center in Santa Monica, and out of his apartment, and he just was a marvelous teacher. I mean, I don't agree with what he taught, 
necessarily, but there's some people just are inspiring just the force of their personality and the way they frame things. Uh, and he went on to just be a really influential teacher. So that's very funny. Uh, I don't like any of this for creative write for fiction writing, you know, to think of it in movie, any kind of filmic terms. Uh, it's always a mistake to think of your book and have these, oh, you need this kind of a turn and you need this kind of an arc and blah, blah, blah. No, you, fiction is where you do whatever you want to do. And um, you're de developing your own sense of rhythm and movement and structure and borrowing from film is just going to cut it down, uh, cut you down to size. I don't necessarily think that's the best way to go. But he, oh, Zune, did you teach, did you take a class with him? Yeah, yeah, the filmic structure is not going to serve you uh, unless you want to write a novel that's 120 pages long that's just a bunch of dialogue. You know, fiction is different, and you can do so much more. And what happens with us is that we, the free, the very freedom of fiction writing um, frightens people that they can do whatever they want. And then they're looking to retreat into some smaller form and with a blueprint. But screenplay is a blueprint and you're not making a blueprint when you're writing uh, fiction. You're noticing what you're doing as you're doing it and taking it places. You know, uh, it's, very, it's much less purposeful than, than a screenplay. It's much more, it's allow, it allows a bigger slice of the world. Um, it does all kind. fiction is everything. See, screenplay is just the armature. And then the director, the actors, the lighting director, the cinematographer, the costume designer, you know, editor. Everybody has their piece afterwards. Whereas in fiction, you are all, you're all of those things. So following screenplay, also everything has to, everything in f screenplay, everybody has to say everything. Whereas in fiction, we know what people are thinking. So it's a different animal. Um, I mean, I also don't read them. You know, if you want to read them, fine. But don't try to squeeze your fiction into that form. You know, you're not serving your, yourself and your art form. And this is just opinion, one person's opinion. So, you know, I'm just putting my two cents in there. So thank you for joining me for Writing Wednesday. Um, is an MFA in creative writing, Lauren asks, uh, that much better than a Master's of Arts in writing? Uh I'm in a master's in writing program, but I worried I should have pursued an MFA. Well, the difference is that an MA is not a terminal degree. That is, you know, there's an, it's an academic thing and an employment thing. Um, an MFA is a terminal degree, meaning when they're looking for someone to teach, they they're asking for a terminal degree, so that's MFA or PhD. Um, but is it that much better? You know, I don't know. I, I didn't do it. I have a BA in history. You know, I'm I'm a wild seed. I'm, I'm what do they call it in Gattaca? You know, the people who aren't in the test tube. Um, so I'm a little bit an outlier in this academic thing. I've taught as an adjunct, but the field, that door is closing. You know, I know so many people like me who taught themselves how to write or took, you know, classes from, you know, incredible writers, but not degree program, who have gone back, experienced writers with six books under their belt, who have had to go back and usually did a low res MFA because they needed the degree from their because they were teaching an MFA program.
you know, that's a, you know, it's a kind of through the looking glass problem of, I don't, I don't know about that one. But if you do the MA in writing because you wanted to do it and you like the people who are teaching, what's the harm? If you want that terminal degree, you might be going for a PhD. I, you know, and I don't know where you live and I don't know what your, you know, what you want to do with it. So um, that's caveat, uh, lots of caveats there. So anyway, um, there's Writing Wednesday. Hope to see you uh, at The Art of the Sentence, if you're interested, at uh, communityofwriters.org. If you're writing um, comedy and are interested, this is like probably the most experience you're ever going to see between two covers, Comedy Writer by Andrew Nichols. And uh, it's on Amazon. So anyway, thank you. And if you have more other questions, you can always write to me through my website and uh, I can use your question as the basis of a writing Wednesday. All righty. Have a good week and uh, happy holidays. Bye.